Hi, Mark. Hi, Andrew. How you doing? Hi, people at home. How are you all? Fine, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And yourself? <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're well used to the imaginary conversation. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've been, been talking to myself for, for months now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's ni nice to see we've got zero viewers. <laughs> Jan, get on there, man. He's just messaged me. Come on. But, oh, we've, we've got a, a, an angry smiley as well. So... <laughs> Without any viewers, that's amazing. <laughs> that, that might be uh, Michael Quack, the photographer from Dusseldorf, who's sending me links saying, get some lighting. <laughs> <laughs> who said that? Get this light for your laptop. It's really cheap and it will make us like see you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought last week you were kind of beautifully lit and I looked like I was in some kind of um, weird tunnel. And this week it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. You're it's just sort of you. random. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm in a sort of a dreamy haze. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's more to do with that. <laughs> so this week we're in English, as you may have gathered, and uh, we thought we could maybe just talk about approaches to songwriting. Um, so um, you hear about people who write songs. People have different ways of doing it. There's no one way of doing it. Um, I think it's fairly standard ways of people come up with chord sequence. Then a melody and then write some words. Is that how you approach it, Mark? Um, it's diff different ways, different ways, really. Uh, something I discovered recently, having, uh, you know, we're um, approaching, approaching things in a slightly different way, sometimes a very different way to what we're used to at the moment, uh, writing new material for, uh, for, for various uh, projects. And I was thinking about lyrics and kind of like coming away from maybe kind of the the uh, the folk side of things, like trying to tell, you know, a, a story directly in that way. And um, I just started with lyrics, just kind of writing a line, the first line that came into my my head, and then just following it, following it on completely um, intuitively and with instinct. So I didn't have any idea of subject. Um, I didn't say, right, I'm going to write a song about this or that. I just kind of started writing a line and just see what came out. And it was like, that's why it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so that song you sent me, I'm Hungry, <laughs> was, was that written like that? <laughs> but, uh, it was really interesting to watch it unfold. And, and uh, you know, the, some, some, some good lyrics came out. And, and, and the, the weird thing about it is, is it, it actually formed a thread and had had um, uh, had a meaning and a subject later. When I read it through, I thought, "Oh yeah, that's kind of you know, that's kind of uh, that's about that, you know." And it was a really that was kind of a big big revelation for me. That just happened recently. All right. Yeah. So before that, you'd been sort of you'd had a, um, a subject. <laughs> oh, right. oh, I see. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Already had a, like a subject in your head and thought, "I want to write a song about this." Yeah, well, no, because um, I found that quite difficult. Every now and again, a subject would, uh, I'd read a story or watch something on TV, uh, The Empire Windrush, for example. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I kind of, I, I watched a documentary about that and it, it was all new to me. I never knew that story that that uh, so many people from the uh, former colonial countries and what they sacrificed, you know, it was... Um, quite quite a and that that moved me so when something moves me a story like then usually a song uh, a song comes out like that yeah and how about yourself um yeah i think whenever i've tried to choose the subject to write a song the song's been awful because you, you end up just sort of saying it too directly so i think the same really just um write the first i think if something's moved you then that's going to be the first thing in your head anyway so so every now and again, I'll just write the first thing down that comes into my head. And if it sounds impressive or interesting or powerful, I might try and work it into a song. And if it just sounds stupid or boring, then I leave it <laughs> or keep it for later and hope it might in the future. Uh, so I do. Um, I heard years and years ago, I saw a, a television show with an interview with um, Julian Cope from the Te Teardrop Explodes. Oh, yeah. And someone asked him about his songwriting and uh, he said, oh, I just kind of walked down the street and I've got this dictaphone in my pocket because he said, I got bored of myself just doing chords and then um, putting a song on top. So I just had a dictaphone with me all the time. 
and I, every time an idea came into my head, a melodic thing or words or whatever, I'd sort of record it and listen back and later get the guitar and it'll be GD again, as it always is. And he, and he said, I would have in the past because I've written so many songs already that do that, just left it. But then I thought, no, that's a good idea and it goes GD. Doesn't matter because all songs do. <laughs> so <laughs> All good songs do. So, uh, so it's like trying to get work around as, you must have found this by now as well. Uh, once you've written a lot of songs, that's a, an obstacle. It doesn't. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder because you think, well, I've already done that, or, or I can't do that again. And you just start telling yourself you can't do things. Absolutely, yeah. And it's. I mean, I've tried to like in the. You know, I've had a, a very creative period of uh, lockdown and and stuff like that. So I've tried not not to worry too much about it kind of stay in the moment and then finish it and if if it ends up sounding like that or something else then then making the necessary changes you know yeah so i I get the impression some artists don't even bother making the necessary changes and everyone still likes the music (laughs) Uh, there's a few comments here by the way um yeah read them out he says hello (laughs) hope you're both well yes thank you yeah hi hello you too from eva hi eva Eva. Christian, uh, Christian, Cyprian Payne uh, is still asking us to do Grateful Dead songs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're well, Cyprian. And Anna says, uh, so you remember the first song you wrote, question mark. Oh. Um, and actually, the other day, I did. It just came into my head. I think I was about, I had like a little Bon Tempe organ and was really into reggae when I was about 10 or 12. And I wrote a song called School. And for some reason, the lyrics and, and the tune and everything came back to me just in my head the other day. Go so on. I'm going to do a little, I'm going to try and do a little rend- rendition of my first ever song. I mean, I can't do it. But my voice hadn't broken. I was a, a little kid. So it was like, go to school every weekday. With a very strong County Durham accent at the time as well. <laughs> There's a tape somewhere of it. Go, go to school every weekday. At break time we go out to play Dogs come in occasion I can't find the chords Dogs come in occasionally Doesn't really bother me Keeps the cats out anyway That was my first ever song. Wow, it's amazing how you can hear it like uh, <laughs> not really developed over the years. Yeah, as you know, I, I struck gold <laughs> <laughs> instantly and just sort of you know Midas touch <laughs> yeah yeah and I just inspired Bill Bailey from that moment onwards and, <laughs> and he's made a career out of it yeah yeah well I mean for me I was uh I, I was a drummer in bands and in indie rock bands and and stuff like that so I didn't really touch on songwriting I used to play guitar and I learned guitar for the purpose of being able to busk and travel as uh, the reason I learned to play the guitar <clears throat> and I suppose the first song that I wrote properly was Wine From A Mug, just because, you know, we for the first two albums, Andrew wrote uh, most of the songs, or all of the songs, um, aside, aside <clears throat> excuse me, from the traditional ones. So that was the first one that kind of popped out. Yeah, and it was lovely. Yeah. I remember I remember that happening. It's a, it's a um, uh, what's the word? You, you have to... Get over, get over yourself to to do your first song. I think as an adult, maybe as a kid, you just do stuff and don't really question it. But as as an adult, I think it's a bit of a process to to have the the guts to to do it. And you did, and it was, it was fantastic. It's a huge, that you did a huge a huge step for me, you know, as well. Like yeah. working alongside you, you're a, you know, you're a great songwriter. And as you just heard, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, and then it just goes from there, and it is it's a very personal thing, and um. Uh, one of the things, you know, I, we're both multi-instrumentalists. Um, <clears throat> so playing the different instruments also influences how a song can go. And if you're lucky enough to kind of uh, to have the time <laughs> to invest, to learn a few different instruments or with the guitar and the mandola, they're very, very different and very different songs will come out from uh, from those uh on those two instruments so and recently well how i spent my time in uh lockdown is i bought myself a electric piano 
Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, started to uh, started to um, just kind of play around and find chords, and then started sussing out where the chords were, and then started to write songs from uh, uh, from the piano. And I just found that opened like a whole new a whole new um, uh, way of thinking. And I, there were ways that I just kind of accidentally, because it is a lot of, there are a lot of accidents, happy accidents. When you're playing the guitar, you'll find a chord. You didn't mean to go there and you just go, oh, that's the one. Great. And it's, uh, and yeah. it's a, a different process on the piano. So that's been really, uh, that's been really good. But I'm not going to play any. Oh, I was just about to say, come on, give us a, <laughs> go on, give us a, give us a blast what, or something. What I did learn during uh, lockdown. <laughs> Mama, I just killed a man. I wrote this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to ask you that. Put a gun against his head. Pulled my trigger, now he's dead. Wrong chords. Mama, life had tossed me down. Here we go. Now I've gone and thrown it all. So that was me in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God it was lockdown. <laughs> it was great. It was great fun. <laughs> and I just turned very shy. Up. <laughs> oh, shy Mark. As you yeah. know me. Yeah. So do you think that um, if you write a song on the piano, it'll turn out differently to if you write a song on the guitar? I do, yeah. I do think so. Yeah, yeah. It just gives you a different. Yeah. A, it's a different atmosphere, isn't it? It's a different texture of sound, and uh, it's been really, really interesting to try and um, you know play with that and sort of like come from that, you know, from that folk, folky style and moving into more contemporary. I found that a little bit easier because I, you know, my my initial my musical roots are generally uh, from the contemporary side. Well, psychedelic. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure that's contemporary anymore. <laughs> yeah, which is great because I love psychedelic music. I think uh, when we talk about sort of popular musical, it's usually the psychedelic stuff that I gravitate more towards. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was just thinking, sort of, if you the, even the way you tune a guitar, for me anyway, can can. Um, can dictate, well, not dictate, but can send you in a different direction. What am I tuning to at the moment? Yeah, I'm in Dadgad at the moment. So Dadgad's an open tuning. So you could basically only really play in D. <laughs> not really the case, but uh, more or less, if you leave everything to chance, you'll be in D. So that kind of pins you down to like a modal folky thing where it's like a drone of a bagpipes in the background. And everything put down always always has that D's in it, those D's in it. So you, you get a, a certain type of song. So if I wrote one now. I'm looking at the markies in the dark on my screen. I'm looking at Mark, he's in the dark on my screen. And you get that kind of sound. I don't know if that means anything to anyone. Uh, Hope you're recording this, Mark. I think we might need to release that on the next album. It's quite good, I thought. <laughs> and uh, retuning. So standard tuning, G and D, as Julian Cope said. I'm looking at my keys in the dark on my screen. Then you can put a seventh. Oh, oh, oh. I'm looking at my keys. Don't play along on your piano. On my screen. I'm looking at my keys in the dark on my screen. <laughs> it suddenly <laughs> sounds more puppy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah who'd have who'd have funk it so yeah that's for, that's why we're not rich and famous because we've been playing in dadgad all these years yeah. <laughs> it put us instantly in a niche yeah. i've got a piano and andrew's yeah. tuned his guitar up sky's the limit yeah yeah so you're gonna are you gonna get a mustache and a and a, and a big boa feather boa and uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll look forward to that being in a, a psychedelic rock band. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid, folks, the time's up again for this week. It goes so quickly. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks for all your emojis, especially all those um, angry emojis we've been sent. I'll have a look later to see why. <laughs> thanks for your comments. Uh, uh, one just made me giggle just before. I think it was Tim said, um, uh, interesting what subtitles made out of dictaphone. I don't want to know, Tim. <laughs> I really don't want to know. So, um, and oh, Anna says, subtitle, the way you chew a guitar. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did it not? <laughs> anyway, thanks everyone for watching. We're back in German next week. And in English again, uh, the week after that. Take care of yourselves. Write some songs. Yeah, and keep we'll posting. It. Keep posting yeah. to the Facebook and our Instagram, yeah. and keep an eye on what we're doing. We'll be getting a, a streaming concert again together very, very soon. Yeah, and share this, share this podcast, please. Mm -hmm. If you like it, share it with your friends, and uh, that, that would be doing us a massive favor. Go on, Mark, play us out. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah.